Hi everybody, Creative Katie Karen Birchall here. Life is about using the whole box of crayons. As artists, as creators, I know when I started I tended to go to the same color colors all the time. I was constantly in the purple zone, purples and blues. That was my happy place. And it was only over time as I created more and I discovered things about how colors work that I started branching out and experimenting and using other color schemes that I typically didn't automatically go to and adding different colors to my palette. This year, my word of the year is challenge. So I'm even challenging myself even more to try color combinations that are different, that aren't what you see me typically create with. I want to challenge myself. I want to put myself in kind of that discomfort place and solve the problems that present with a different color scheme. So I came up with the color scheme challenge and I've started this in January in my Facebook group and in the Facebook group Art Journaling for Beginners and my Facebook group is called Mixed Media Creations and you can join there and you can participate with the challenge and post what you're creating. But basically the idea behind the challenge is to share with you some of the color schemes that I have learned to love. When you mix paint you end up with some surprising results and I want to share those with you and have you discover them as I did. I'm not trained I have never taken a class in color theory. I learn by doing, by experimenting, by mistake, quite honestly. Now, what I'm going to do is set up a bit of a reference tool for you to help you get going with color blending, with color mixing, so that you can benefit from this as well. So what I grabbed is I just bought these mini composition books. You get a pack of three from the dollar store and in Canada it's a buck twenty-five and you get three of them. They're stitched, they're just notebook pages. I wanted the idea of having it in one place as kind of a reference tool. So as we go and do the challenges and I promise that there will be one a month, sometimes two, and then I will create a page using that particular color scheme as well. And there will be a video that will come out, probably not right away because I want you to experiment with those colors without any preconceived ideas of how they have to look. And then you can come back to my Facebook group mixed media creations and post your make and you're going to be surprised at the variations that we are all going to get with using the same two, three, four colors with the addition of black and white and then you can use you know silver or gold as kind of an accent to finish off the page. So I, what I've done, and I'm going to show that in the video, I just made a cover using some inspirational color quotes. Life is about using the whole box of crayons and I challenge you to use all those colors of paints. Be a pop of color in a black and white world. Get a color wheel download it and glue it onto the first page. This is a great reference tool and if you don't have a color wheel I encourage you to download one and print it off or go and buy one. Sometimes you can find these inexpensive at the Dollar Tree. They're only you know four to six bucks Canada at Walmart so they're not expensive and they are invaluable. So I'm going to 
cut to the video where I'm going to make the cover for my book and then I'm going to show you what I'm going to encourage you to do to set yourself up as you do the color scheme challenge. I'm going to do some collaging of scrap papers. I have an assortment of old little bits of gel prints in these folders. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to collage kind of in the color and order of the rainbow. Because this is all about color schemes, I want it to put every single color on the cover. And I'm going to look for a color related quote to put on the cover as well. So I'm just collaging papers. I'm using matte medium to put on there. And I'm just ripping these little bits and using up these little bit of scraps that make this lovely, lovely pattern when all is said and done. I'm sped up this video because really this is not about making the cover, although I encourage you to make something nice that appeals to you. So after this is dry, I cut out to size to cover on top of this composition book. So whatever measurements, I get out my little cutter and I'm cutting it and I'm looking at the patterns and I'm trying to be very specific and basically making a lot of fuss about very little here. What I suggest you do is just make a template and then you can make multiple composition books and covers on that. So I'm going to cover the front and the back and an one of the inside covers as well. So I'm going to use matte gel to glue it down to the front. So I got a straight edge there. That's why I brought up my cutter. And I find that using the brayer to press it down really helps form that seal. And that's just a little small cheapy brayer that I have that works perfectly for that purpose. So I'm cutting this down, trimming off the edge, checking to make sure that it's all perfectly adhered. Again, trimming off more. And I'm loving the look of the collaging that I've done here. But you could use a gel print. You can paint on it if you want. Now I cut out the quote, life is about using the whole box of crayons. And I picked a font that was fairly dark and bold because I wanted that contrast, the black and white with the color um, background. And I put another one in the middle, be a pop of color in a black and white world. Find what appeals to you and use that or use nothing. So now that that's done, I'm edging it in black with a makeup sponge and acrylic paint, just getting rid of the white edge of the paper, just kind of frames the page as well. And then I'm using the floating acrylic technique here to just kind of shade around the outside. Again, I want this to look like a mini piece of art. It's gonna be sitting on my desk. I want it to look nice. I'm using my Secura Glaze Jelly Roll Pan. This is kind of, it has a, a, a shine to it and it's dimensional. So I'm just coloring that. Now I encourage you to get a color wheel. So we're just going to die downloaded this one and I'm just going to glue it onto the front page. Now on to setting up your color schemes and color blending reference tool. So the color scheme challenge, I've done a few of them already. So I'm going to input that into my book and show you how to figure out how the colors in a color scheme are going to interact. So this is one of the pages from the color scheme challenge and the colors here were teal, yellow and gray and you can check the video. There is a video if you want to see that in there and you can definitely do the color scheme whenever, fit it in however, whenever. So what I'm going to do is I just made myself a stencil with paint splotch. I'm just getting fancy, but you can just swatch the color. You can paint a circle if you want, just put a tracer down, um, or it could just be, you know, some paint. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, put the colors, <clears throat> 
that I had. And I'm going to put, and most of the color skins ones are going to have three, three colors primarily. And when you're doing the challenge, how I've set it up, you can add black, you can add white, you know, a silver, gold, you know, you can finish it. No color scheme police are going to come to your house. So I'm just putting that on the page. Now I haven't put any gesso on. I'm not worried about the lines of this booklet. I'm just going to get the color down here. So there is the teal that I used. Now you can mix every single one of the colors with white or with black or with each other. So but I just want to put them down here. These are the colors I use. Now, I'm going to list the names of the colors that, that I have. Use whatever paints you have as, as close to the color as you have. It, it doesn't have to be exact, exactly the color. So, So I'm getting straight up color from the tube here and I will label that. So there we have whatever colors. So this Now the thing you need to know about paints is when you are mixing paints that are wet together they are either going to make something pleasing or they are going to make a color that you don't like. If you look at a color wheel, so we have, we have this color, here's the yellow is coming out of here, the teal is over here, and the gray is kind of a neutral. Now, depending on the tones in the gray, it's going to mix differently. Now, if they're across from each other on the color wheel, they're complementary colors, which means they're going to pop when they're on the same page together, but you want to avoid mixing them when they're wet. So yellow and purple, you want to avoid that because you're likely to get a brownish, muddish, not pleasing color green and orange, the blue and this orange. So you want to avoid that. But what we're going to do here is actually do some color mixing. So over here, we're going to mix the teal and the gray. So I'm just going to, off to the side, I just have the teal and the gray. And I'm just mixing them, and I'm gonna zoom out here. I'm just mixing them on my glass mat and I'm just going to paint it. So you can see when those two colors mix wet you get a toned down teal. Kind of like that color. I'm okay with that. So if they mix when they're wet I would be okay with that. So now I'm going to mix some of the yellow with the teal. So the teal is kind of blue, so as you expect, we're getting a green. So again, if they mix when they're wet, I'm going to get green. If I don't want green, I don't want to mix them when they're wet. I can dry in between and get avoid getting that green color. So then I'm going to take the gray
and the yellow. And depends on how much you use of each color, it's going to vary the, the end. Now there, that is kind of a moss yuck. For me, I would not want that on my page. So I would, I'd be okay if these two colors mix when they're wet, I would be okay unless I don't want green. But I really want to avoid that color. That is not pleasing to me. And then in the middle, I am going to mix all three colors. So if I put more gray, it's going to go one way, right? So, oops. So it's kind of that with the gray in that. So now we have all the basic colors and we have what's going to happen. So I know I want to avoid, I can make a plan. It's going to label this. So you will label it with whatever color you have. You can put brand names if you need to. I'm going to not because I know what I have. And there you have the first color challenge. Cobalt, turquoise, or teal, cad yellow, natural gray. The colors you get are going to vary again dependent on the exact brand, shade that you pick. And then again, you can take the cobalt, turquoise, mix white with it, you can mix gray, black with it, and you're going to get a different hue. So there is the one challenge. Now, the second challenge we used, of course, three other ones, three other colors. I'm going to zoom out here and this was the page or the tutorial where you can go and see me creating that. So again, I used the yellow, I used orange, and I used deep violet. So I'm going to grab those colors and we're going to do the same for this. So we're going to do deep violet, which is one of my favorite colors. Now I am not a trained, formally trained artist. I learn by doing and I'm passing along what I know. So if I misspeak, use a term incorrectly, Please don't, don't correct me, you know, you may know more than I do and that's altogether likely. I'm just sharing what I know, making it simple so that we can, you know, people think that color mixing is, is so difficult or color theory is so complex and it doesn't have to be. And yellow. Okay, so now that we have those while they are drying, I'm going to again do some mixing. Now back to what I was saying, most of what I learned about how colors mix and what lovely colors and combinations make some interesting colors, I've learned by using my gel plate, quite honestly, mixing colors, or by doing it by accident. And then when you like what you see, you create it again and again and again. This book will keep everything together. It'll force you to combine colors, and then you have a 
handy reference tool to flip through. If you're looking, you can say, oh, I'm going to try this color scheme. And, oh, I have to remember I don't want this, so I'm going to avoid doing this. So again, off to the side, I'm just going to mix the deep violet and some of this orange. And you're going to see it makes this absolutely lovely kind of rose color that I absolutely love. Now, if we look at the color wheel, we have the orange is here, and it is across from the blue violet, but the red violet's a little closer to it. It's just because the red violet has red in it that we're getting that. If you took purple and orange, you may get a whole different thing. So if you don't have deep violet by Liquitex, and you're substituting another one, you may end up with a color that is different than this that you may or may not like. But now you know because you've actually taken the little bit of time to figure it out. So now I'm going to take the purple and the yellow. Now you know violet is right across from yellow. So when we did this challenge, and this is why I got the idea to do this video, people said, well, how do you avoid from getting mud? And getting brown. Now again, because it's deep violet, not precisely that, you're going to get, so you get kind of a, Is that a sienna? Burnt sienna kind of color, which, you know what, I can file back and if I want a burnt sienna, I know if I mix those two colors, that's what I'm going to get. So again, while I may not want it on this page, then again, I may be okay with that. And then the yellow and the orange, I don't anticipate that that would be problematic. They are next to each other on the color wheel. Col colors that are next to each other on the color wheel are going to mix and blend very well. And depending if I put more yellow or more orange, I'm going to get more yellow or more orangey tone. If I add white, it's going to change that. So if you are mixing these two colors and you don't want to get that, one of the things that you can do is make sure the orange is in between. So if I put the deep purple, wherever I put the orange, if I'm putting it wet on wet, I'm going to put a barrier because the orange is going to mix with the yellow and be okay. It's going to mix with the purple, the deep violet and be okay. I just want to avoid this, so I put a barrier. Or you stop and dry beforehand. Or you use collage papers that are these colors that are already dry. So now I want to mix all three colors. And see what I get. And I'm putting that in the middle. So that was the color scheme challenge number two. Okay, and the next color scheme that we are going to have is Naples Yellow. which is a very opaque, creamy, kind of parchment -y kind of yellow. Now, if you don't have a Naples yellow, I love Naples yellow. It works so well. But what you can do is take your CAD yellow, this is medium hue, and you can mix it with 
either white or um, titanium white or unbleached titanium and you will make it a little more opaque and creamy so that it it gets closer to that but you want that opaqueness and you want it a little bit softer than cad yellow so whatever yellow you have add white to it or unbleached titanium or you know kind of match it to kind of a parchment color because that's where the magic because it has that white in it that's where it's going to have magic in it quinacridone magenta and we are going to have black as the third color. Now I know in the color challenges I'm saying you can add black, but this one is going it needs to it's going to feature a little more than just adding that contrast. But again, you decide how much of every color you want. And remember, I can take the black and add white and end up with some grays and mix that in there and that would change everything. So there we have our three colors. So now we want to mix them and see what we get. So we're going to take some of the Naples yellow and again depending on how much quinacridone magenta you're going to get this coral color you're going to get kind of an orangey corally color and every time you mix it wet on wet if you have more yellow you're going to end up with a little slightly different tone but it's a lovely color combination when you mix these two you get that third color this really becomes or I encourage you to try to make that the third color now when you add black to a color you don't want to add too much so I'm adding the black to this and you get kind of a burgundy cherry and it's not really picking up very well but you'll see when you do that and that so again that's something that you can put in the vault you have it here and saying oh I need a dark burgundy well if I take a red or a quinacridone magenta and I mix black in it different levels of it can I get can I mix my own burgundy so I hope you see the value of doing this now whether you do my challenges and join my Facebook group mixed media creations I changed the name a while back but I'm still stuck in it or whether you just choose your own colors you see something you like and say okay that's it was the person used this this and this try it out go to your book put the colors down do some mixing see what happens when you mix them wet look at your color wheel I highly encourage you to get a color wheel colors next to each other typically they're going to work well together colors that are op opposite each other are going to make brown and that's fine if you're looking for brown but it, you, this way you know before you're doing your page what you're getting into. So I'm going to add just a very little bit of black to my and as expected 
I'm getting kind of a gray. I don't really like that color. Don't know that I would mix it up on purpose to get that color. And then we're going to mix all three. I need a little more. So again, the Naples yellow, just like deep violet, was one of my favorite colors that I've used tons of tubes of paint. The Naples yellow is another one of those colors. I'm using my favorites. I'm sharing, you know, with you my favorites. And again, when you mix all three, do you like it? Do you not? That's up to you. So the video on that, when I post the challenge, I'm going to try, I'm going to promise to do at least one color challenge every month. That gives you lots of times to play, you know, make your sample page, however you decide to do it, you know, on a tag, in a little bit of a reference guide book. You want to get fancy like this on an art journal page. You can extend this and mix, take the quinacridone magenta and mix it with white. Take the Naples yellow and mix it with white. Do all the mixing. Mix it with black, mix it with, you know, if you had a bigger page, if you decided to do it on something like this, you could do the, you know, the black and the, and the white adding to those colors as well. So you decide how much you want to do, but I highly recommend. I want to make these one to show you the process of doing it, how to help yourself learn how to blend colors. So one, you don't have to buy every tube of paint they come out with because now I can mix colors if I'm out of that color. And somehow when you do mix colors on the page, the tone and the vibrance, it just, it's just more vibrant than out of a tube. Okay, so go and get yourself a notebook. Use what you have. Go to the dollar store, get the mini composition book. Cut out papers. Get going. Create a cover for your reference tool for the color scheme challenge. Look at the wealth of information I have here. That's the next one. Bye for now.